Hello everyone, it's Paul here from Island Life. Uh, today's topic will be about uh, uh, real estate, buying property in Portugal. And I'm going to give you five tips that uh, everybody should kind of follow through. And if you follow these uh, these tips, it'll make life so much easier for you and also allows uh, less room for error. So without any further delay, let's get this video on the way. Tip number one is uh, location. This is true in Canada, this is true in the United States, this is true in Portugal also. Location, location, location is still rule number one of real estate. The most important thing, of all things I'm gonna talk about here, but the most important thing, you ensure you get the property in a place that you like. There's no point in buying a property, if you like the property itself, but the area, you don't like the area. The area is extremely important. So that's tip number one for you. Tip number two is um, ensure you have all the documents pertaining to the property. Um, either is, you know, an electrical certificate, is the gas certificate, is the drawings of the property. Make sure the property you're buying, it's legal in order for you to be able to sell this property one day if you decide to. Portugal real estate is not like Canadian real estate. It's not like the US real estate. You put a house for sale in uh, Canada and US and the chances are you'll sell that house within 30 days, in most cases. Portugal, when you're buying a property, um, you're basically buying it for life, almost. So when you find a property that you want, you ensure that is the property that you want because you may have to live on development for the rest of your life or at least for a few years. Selling a property in Portugal is not as easy as it is in North America. Step number two. So tip number three is um, obviously already four is the poker face. You walk in the um, you walk in the property uh, for the first time, you want to visit, you want to spend five, five, six minutes, no more than that. Um, but the most important thing you can do with that is actually uh, try not to show that you're too interested in the property. And why do you need to spend only five minutes, five to six minutes? Uh, the reason for it is uh, so you can negotiate. So if you leave the property on your first visit and the realtor doesn't get a feeling for how you're feeling about the property that he's going to think and he's going to report back to the seller that, you know, this uh, potential buyer is unsure about the property. So um, when you do that, you open up the room for negotiation, basically. So allow a couple of days to go by. Usually the realtor try to contact the, the potential buyer to get a feel for it. For two days, don't say anything at all. Anything that indicates you're either interested or not, let two days go by. So now they're gonna go um, and think about, man, we just lost another potential buyer. Two days later, either the realtor contacts you or not. If they don't contact you, you contact them. And you ask for, um, don't say much. The only thing you request is to book a second visit. And this time you wanna spend a little bit more time so on your second visit, you come and you inspect the property a little bit in more detail. But what this does, this opens up the room for negotiation. And um, now you can negotiate the price. You don't do it there. You don't do it at the site. You inspect the property, take a little bit longer. And uh, make sure you inspect everything in detail, like I said before, uh, and leave again. Again, don't tell the realtor you're interested or not. You, you can go back and put it in writing. You want to communicate now from this point on in writing. And the reason I say in writing, because realtors here, they tend to want to make that quick phone call, find out how much you want to pay, they try to negotiate that way. I would recommend to negotiate in writing. Um, you contact the realtor later, later on at the end of the day and tell them you're interested in putting an offer, but you want to put an offer in writing. And um, in writing, it has a different value than it does verbally. It's something about when you see something in writing as opposed to, you know, something verbally. That's what I would recommend. So if you do it this way, what that does, 
open up that room for negotiation and now you can negotiate to whatever price you feel comfortable. So that is uh, tip number three for you. Uh, tip number four is um, get a lawyer. And get a lawyer that, there's a lot of lawyers in Portugal, a lot of them, they speak very good English, but I would definitely recommend one that speaks English. Not only speaks English, but he's willing to do these two things for you. Uh, number one is he's willing, he or she is willing to write the contract in English, not only in Portuguese, but also in English, so you understand that perfectly. Uh, ask the lawyer um, um, for them to request for the title transfer to be explained to you in English as well. So that's something I did request it. My lawyer not only um, uh, wrote the contract in English for me to understand it, also requested at the of the land transfer taxes, uh, what do you call it there, registration office, Resisto Civil, that's what's called here. Uh, the officer there, they had to explain it all in English to me, um, which is an advantage of buying a property in Portugal. Most people here speak English as well. So get a lawyer that you feel comfortable, that you feel comfortable uh, with, and at the same time, the lawyer will explain this to you in English if you're not fluent in Portuguese. If you're fluent in Portuguese, you don't have to. So um, it's a lawyer. So the importance of getting the good lawyer so you feel comfortable with is extremely important. Also, the lawyer is going to explain to you the process, which is the process is very simple. Uh, if you have a good lawyer, they will explain the process to you. So I'm not going to, to do the, that over here. Um, but some of the things that lawyers can do and help you along if you're confused is um, when you find a property that you like, usually to secure the property, you'll need to give a deposit and usually about 10%. So have the lawyer explain that to you and the lawyer can actually go with you to the bank and help you make that transfer of the funds uh, from the buyer, which will be you, to the seller and get a copy of the receipt so uh, that everything becomes legal. The lawyer will do that for you. So that's why the importance of getting a good lawyer. It's... Uh, Tip number four. Now, tip number five, this is equally as important, is um, after your first visit, after you play that poker face team, you want to request a second visit or third visit at different times. And the reason I say at different times is a different time throughout the day. You want to request one in the morning. You want to request one uh, in the middle of the day or towards the end of the day. You want to request one at night. And so you might get surprised that um, when you buy a property, you only inspect it during the daytime. Um, you move in afterwards and you find something you don't like. For instance, noise. You may move into a property, everything looks great during the day. Uh, you didn't hear any noise from above, below, on the sides, or whatever the case may be. Um, because it was during the day, the neighbors are away. So try to inspect the property at night when you know everybody is kind of home kind of thing. So you get the feel and the vibe for for the property. So uh, yeah. noise. Noise is something to consider in Portugal, uh, unless if you're buying a separated property out, out there in the, in the countryside. Um, yeah, you need to consider noise in Portugal because um, uh, houses here tend to be a little bit noisy just because the way they're built. It's not that you have bad neighbors or anything like that. It's just the fact the way the properties are built here. So consider noise and uh, inspect the property uh, several times at different times. And um, so you get a feel for the property. Not only the property, um, you should definitely look around the neighborhood, drive at different times, uh, go there, uh, you know, uh, it is what you want. So those are my tips for you. Uh, if you follow these tips, I think you will be fine. You'll have no, nothing to worry about. Buying a property in Portugal is fairly easy if you follow these rules. And um, now good luck in searching for that dream home. Uh, so guys, those were my five tips for uh, buying a property in Portugal. I hope you enjoyed uh, uh, the information I put out there for you and, and the content. And if you do, don't forget to subscribe and uh, press that bell. Um, so uh, thank you so much for watching uh, uh, Island Life. Uh, and have yourself a good day, a night, wherever you are.